Hello everyone, I've been wanting to do this video for a very long time. My very first annual A Response to the Haters video. Because as you get bigger on YouTube, inevitably you're gonna get a lot of hate comments. And so I just wanted to make this video to address the most common complaints I get on my channel and why they're frankly bogus. But I get these comments very, very frequently and I just wanted to take a video to address them and explain to the haters out there the ridiculous of them. So if you are mad at me, if you hate my channel, if you really, really just have beef with me, this is most definitely the video for you. So without further delay, let us look at the most common complaints against the channel. <clears throat> Item number one. You're always negative. You're way too negative. I do, in fact, do positive videos on my channel. I did a positive review for Dune. I did a positive review for Inside Out 2. I recently did a positive video about how I want the MCU to get better. I did a positive video that I worked on for like a week about the Star Wars prequels. I did a positive video about my favorite comics. Guess what? No one watch them because here's the problem even while i do do positive videos on this channel the youtube algorithm never pushes them the youtube algorithm just does not push positive content and i've heard that from other content creators in different spaces that everyone thinks that they're negative all the time because the youtube algorithm never posts never pushes their positive content and i don't really know what to do about that because i want more people to see my positive videos and i want to make more positive videos that are successful but YouTube just never pushes them like if people just don't click on those videos because if the YouTube algorithm is to be believed then uh, people will click on things and then the algorithm will constantly feed them more of that so the reason why negative videos uh, on YouTube pick up so much is because people generally click on negative videos like negativity just sells it just seems to be what people come on the internet for in the case of in being in the movie space however you know I think that maybe people just don't feel like they need to hear another person's opinion if they like a movie or if everything everything's positive like for example in the case of Dune Part 2 mostly positive movie did not get a lot of traction however negative reviews and ranting content and dunking content in terms of movies that's always picked up since the beginning so that's just how it is on YouTube however I have seen people able to get some positive video essays out there so I'm trying to crack the code on how I can get my positive content seen more but I just haven't yet but that is my response to people who say that I'm always negative it's like I do do positive videos, but when they when they go up no one even knows they exist because the YouTube algorithm just does not push them to people and that's very frustrating to me and I don't want to just be negative here on on here all the time because that's not who I am all the time but unfortunately uh, only my negative videos ever really get seen and that's that's just very frustrating but hopefully I'll crack the code to get some more positive content out there but no it is not that I'm just always negative and it's not my fault that the YouTube algorithm only ever pushes negative stuff so don't blame me blame the audiences who only ever look for negative stuff blame the YouTube algorithm and how it works it is not that I'm always negative on here so uh, um <clears throat> Item number two. You grifter! You're a grifter! You're just grifting on everything! You grift, you grift, that's how you get your views! Okay, this, this one is the one that I wanted to address the most because I have heard the word grifter so overused. I have heard anyone who has any kind of online presence, doesn't matter what niche they're in, doesn't matter what kind of content that they're promoting, I have heard literally everyone in every space today accused of being a grifter. Uh, for those who don't know, grifter means you basically just say and do things not because you believe them, but just because you're trying to make money, just because you're trying to get attention. But here's the problem with that. Now, there, I think that the word grifter has kind of lost all meaning because when people use it, I'm like, do you mean anybody who is trying to get views or subscribers for their channel or their content or whatever? Or do you mean the people who are legitimately lying and saying things that they don't even believe just to get clicks because there is a difference because in terms of trying to get a uh, build an audience for your platform or whatever literally everyone is trying to do that and I think it's funny when people accuse me of for example you did acolyte videos because you thought they would pick up on the algorithm I mean 
Yes. I mean, it's funny that people use that as kind of a gotcha. Like, you did this because you thought it would get a lot of views. Ladies and gentlemen, we got her, we got her. Call the Fed. She wants views and subscribers for her channel. Does this not shock you, ladies? Uh, yes. I do want views and subscribers for this channel. That should not be... I don't know why people treat that as such a shock. Any YouTuber is trying to do that. And what I've learned on YouTube is that you do have to play to the algorithm in order to get any traction. You can't do whatever you want, meaning I can't release a video, let's say, uh, ranting about a Marvel project and then release a video on an obscure old movie because while it's technically both movies, those two topics are too at odds with each other. So you do have to understand like what people want to watch and what people want to talk about and, and play into that in order to have things pick up. And any YouTuber is doing that. Any YouTuber in any niche that you watch is always talking about what titles are popular right now, what kind of thumbnails or topics are popular right now, and those sorts of things are always changing and you have to change with the times and understand that. However, there is a way to play to the algorithm while still being honest because, listen, this job would be wholly unsatisfying for me if I was talking about topics that I didn't care about or didn't believe in constantly. So. For example, when people talk about, oh, you did Acolyte videos because you, you thought they'd pick up. Guess what? I realized I did a video on Star Wars. My videos on Star Wars usually do really well. I'm following the Acolyte very closely. It's taking up parts of my time to, uh, a part of my time to follow the Acolyte. I agree that modern Star Wars is terrible and this is the big story of the summer. So at that point, as somebody who is running a small business, which is this YouTube channel, why wouldn't I do videos on the Acolyte? Like, uh, like it's not it's not a big conspiracy or a big gotcha moment for me if I knew that sharing that my honest thoughts on modern Star Wars was going to pick up because I'd seen it pick up, then why wouldn't I do that? But here is the thing, once again, it would be wholly unsatisfying for me to do videos on things that I didn't believe or that I didn't feel passionate about. For example, I did a video uh, last year, everyone knows this, on Rachel Zegler that really picked up that I criticized how she came off in interviews. It was one of the first videos that came out for it, and so it almost got 100,000 views, and that was like the, the biggest video on my channel ever at the time. However, as the months passed, I started to feel like the hate became overblown and it was just going too far. So even though I saw that videos on Rachel Zegler, like dozens of videos a day were getting published, getting hundreds of thousands of views, I didn't do another video on it because I felt like I had said my piece and I felt like the hate was getting too overblown. I didn't feel right about doing more videos about it. So eventually when I did do a new video about it, it was just about me sort of abdicating myself and saying my personal opinion, I felt like the hate had gone too far. I felt like what the changes that needed to happen had happened and I wanted to move on. I could have made thousands of dollars hating on Rachel Ziegler, but that wasn't what I actually believed at the time as, as time went on. So I didn't do that. Once again, like the, the money is not worth it if you're lying or saying something that you don't actually believe. If videos about the Acolyte in a positive light were getting millions of views, then I would still be negative on the Acolyte because that's what I actually believe. Another example of me going against the grain and sort of tell and saying it like I actually think would be my recent video on Channing Tatum's Gambit, which got a lot of controversy as well because I didn't like Channing Tatum's Gambit and everyone else on the internet internet seemed to, or at least a good portion of the internet seemed to. And But part of the reason I made that video, not because I thought it would pick up, I knew that it wouldn't, is because I wanted to get it off my chest because I'm like, I've waited to see Gambit in a film for so long, but uh, now we get him and I'm really disappointed and everyone else is loving him and I'm just not getting it. So I'll do videos on here just to get stuff off my chest. I knew that my videos ranting about Rogue would not be the biggest, uh, you know, uh, red meat to the algorithm algorithm, so to speak, but that is a topic that I genuinely felt so passionate about that I just had to talk about it. And sometimes those videos don't do well, sometimes they do, but I need to get them out there because ultimately I created this channel to be me being able to share my opinions and get them off my chest. So yes, while I have learned how the algorithm works and how to get things to pick up, I would never sell out and say something that I didn't actually believe just to get things to pick up on the internet. Like Jesse Grant news videos. Oh, Kathleen Kennedy attacks critical drinker. It gets almost a million views. 
If I got like $7,000 over a video like that, I would hate myself because I lied just to get views. I don't want to do that. And guess what? You don't need to do that. You can do videos that pick up and still be honest. And sometimes you get surprised because recently I didn't think my Bo de Mayo video would get any views. I did it purely because that was a topic I was passionate about because I thought that it was more open and shut case than people were making it out to be based on how the guy has behaved in the past. I wanted to get the information out there and so I did that video purely off of uh, just passion for the topic didn't think it would get anything and that blew up to be my top video of the month and that is the real satisfying way to run YouTube when you're doing you're always making sure that it's videos that you actually care about that you actually have something to say about it not just saying things solely to be uh, on the algorithm so am I a grifter I think that everybody on YouTube or anyone who has a business or anyone who has a podcast or whatever it might be, is a grifter to a degree because yes, we are trying to build our channels. However, I am not a grifter in the sense of am I just saying things because not because I believe them, but just to get things to pick up on the internet. No, and I have multiple videos and examples to prove that. Like recently in my second video about female characters, I thought it might pick up because um, people really seem to like my videos on female characters in the past. However, I knew it would not be popular among some people to say what I said about girl boss and how I think that the idea of the female action hero in general is getting undue hate just because people are now equivalent, making that the equivalent of bad quality even though the problem was always bad writing to begin with. I knew that that would not be popular among some people and some people got mad at me in the comments. But I said it because it was what I actually believe and what I actually want to get out there and that is what I want to promote on this channel. So. You can disagree with my opinions, and you could even think that I said the stupidest thing that you ever heard in your life, but just know it is always coming from a place of honesty. And for the last time I'll say it, that is the most satisfying way to run a YouTube channel. So that was probably the longest topic I wanted to cover in terms of a response to the haters, but we still have one more. And this is a complaint I get very often that really gets under my skin. So uh, let's just read it here. Item number three, you don't read comics. Oh, look! Oh, what's on my desk? A comic book. Oh, 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 oh. What's on my desk again over here? Another comic book, a whole pack of comic books. Oh, wow. I have comics. Perhaps, perhaps, just perhaps, me referencing comics all the time and referencing specific events in comics all the time means I actually read comics. You don't read comics is usually an argument I get when somebody doesn't like an opinion that I have about comics and therefore they have to figure out a quick zinger to take me down and just want to say you, you're not a comic book fan, you don't really read comics. Yes, I read tons of comics, I've read tons of graphic novels, I've I'm recently have just been reading tons of X-Men, so yeah, I know comics, I'm able to reference them, I have done videos talking about my favorite comics. I know comics. Do I need to read comics on this channel just to prove that I read comics? Yes. Okay then. Like one of the big complaints on the channel is as I'm criticizing Rogue and Magneto is that it happened in the comics. I'm like, I have one of the comics that it happened in. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 275, that is the second Savage Land issue. I have read through all of this. Look, look, there it is on the back of the cover. Uh, I've read through all of it. It's actually a good comic otherwise. Uh, do I need to read this for you? Okay, I guess so. <clears throat> Open space in the vicinity of the Zylia Castell, a fringe system of the outermost rim of the Shi'ar Imperium. For Lalandra, for the Empire, for glory, for freedom, star jammers strike. There, we have video footage now of me reading comics on air. So please do not tell me that I do not read comics. And do not use that as a quick pot shot against me if you disagree with my opinion. But here is the thing about reading comics. There have been thousands of comics published, like or millions of comics published, and it is just impossible, even for someone who dedicates their entire life to reading comics, to read everything and know everything all at once. So yes, I am guilty that sometimes I'll get a fact wrong here and there, or sometimes in the past I've been guilty of sometimes using these secondhand websites like CBR or Screen Rant that give secondhand information about comics, and I'll use that to fill in the gaps, even though they're oftentimes not accurate. But I am one of the few 
few people who came out of the MCU and actually went to the source material and read a good chunk of it. And uh, I, I do know these issues and I know these characters. And sometimes the reason why I have different opinions from other people is I've read a lot and that colors my opinions on the characters differently. And it's just impossible for me to know everything at the top of my head at once. So it is possible for me to make mistakes here and there, but I have read them. And sometimes maybe the information I have is different because these secondhand websites that a lot of people get their information from are the ones that actually are giving the false information. And I understand it is super hard to get into comics and it's super complicated, but it does frustrate me because I feel like a lot of the people accusing me of not reading comics are people who themselves don't read comics and are just going off of Wikipedia information and uh, uh, things that they assume or maybe things they haven't read in a while because sometimes when people argue with me I see them get facts wrong facts that I know not to be true as they're trying to argue with me and I myself am trying to pull back on the you don't read comics argument because it can be completely false you know sometimes uh, people just don't know of a certain run or they don't know of a certain fact you never know for sure I think it's a little bit more valid to accuse someone of not reading reading comics when they say something obvious like, oh, I love the Avengers. Uh, Superman is my favorite Avenger something obvious like that versus them not knowing specifically what happened in like X Factor issue 279 or or this specific thing that happened in a run 40 years ago. It's just impossible for somebody to know everything that ever happened in comics, but it is not a knock against the person for not reading comics just because they said something that you disagreed with or because they got a fact wrong. So yes, I have read comics and please, and I continue to read comics and it is not a, an argument against this channel. And I'm sure I will continue to get more of these kinds of criticisms against the channel in the future, but I just wanted to do a little fun video just dunking on the haters and that these criticisms that people oftentimes levy at me are just not true. I do do positive videos, I do read comics, and I would never do a video on something that I don't actually believe. If I'm going to do a video that I think is going to pick up, it has to be also in line with what I actually believe or I won't do it because once again, the money is just just not worth it being a liar and a skeevy person who just wants to take monies and attention from other people. I'm not no, I'm no Mr. Beast on this channel. And one more hate, hate comment I want to respond is I got someone criticizing me the other day because my screen is dark and my setup looks cheap. Well, yes, it is very cheap. I'm not a rich person, but hey, if you're a person who hates my setup and wants it to look better, you can donate to me on Patreon as these 10 wonderful people have done and help me get more equipment for the channel and maybe have a room that isn't facing away from the sun and we can make this channel be a lot better. And guess what? Even though I get these hate comments, I love this job. I love being a YouTuber. It's my favorite thing that I've ever done and I'm not going to stop doing it no matter how many hate comments I got. So thank you all, all you guys who leave positive comments and positive support on my channel even for the things that you don't agree with and uh, let me know what you think about these hate comments in the comments below or if you have even more hate comments to send me uh, put them in the comments below thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next time